Welcome everybody. Today we're going to be making this seam using flip fluids inside a blender. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and hit num one on our numpad, or num on our one pad, depending on how you speak. We're going to go ahead and grab this cube. I'm going to move it up and we're going to scale it on the z-axis a little bit, just to give it a little bit of different shape. We're going to hit shift A. We're going to bring in our plane and our plane is going to actually be our floor for our cubes to land on. So let's go ahead and scale it up quite a bit. And then we're going to go ahead to our physics tab over here. We're going to add that as a passive rigid body. And we're going to set this one as an active. I'm going to double click on the cube and give it a name of fluid shell. I'm going to go back to the numpad. Or press 1 on the numpad again. Come over here to our physics tab. We're going to click flip fluids. We're going to add this as an obstacle. And then very important, we're going to click Inverse and Export Animation. Now we're going to hit Shift D with the cube selected and then right click to drop it back in place. We're going to go ahead and get rid of the rigid body and we're going to change the fluid to actually fluid instead of obstacle. We're going to rename this one Fluid. That way we can kind of see what's going on. Now we're going to go ahead and zoom out a little bit and I'm going to press Shift D to duplicate and I'm going to put that right about here. Actually Control Z, we need to make sure that we get both ob objects. Now we're going to duplicate those and that's better. Now we're going to go ahead and click on one of them here. We're going to change the mass to about 25 or so. We're going to hit play and see what happens and that's pretty good. Now this is very important, we need to go over here to our Scenes tab, scroll down to Rigid Body Cache, and we need to bake the entire cache. It should not take very long, actually it, took, it was very quick. I'm just going to double check to make sure it looks good. Not too bad. So now we're going to add in another cube, which will be our domain for our fluid. I'm going to bring it up till it's just about the size of that cube. We're going to hit play again and we're going to see where this cube lands. So it lands right about there. So we're going to scale our domain by hitting S and then Shift Z so we don't scale it on the Z axis to about there. Now this is going to be our domain so we need to add it as a domain by clicking our physics tabs, come down to flip fluids. We're going to change the resolution to 300. We're going to come down here to white water. We're going to in, uh, enable white water simulation. Come over to advanced and make sure these are all checked. Now we're going to go ahead and hit bake. This shouldn't take too long. It's going to be a pretty light bake. I'm guessing less than 10 minutes. I think when I did this earlier, it took about 7 minutes. So once that's done baking, we'll see you then. Okay, now that everything's baked, we're going to go ahead and check to make sure it looks okay. And that looks about right. Okay, so just double checking. Alright, perfect. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to hit zero on a numpad to look through the camera perspective. I'm going to press shift and F to kind of get where we want it to go. We're just going to move around using our A, S, D, and W keys. I think that would be pretty good right there. We're going to go ahead and change this to Cycles, and then I'm going to hit Shift-Z to go into real-time view. And let's go ahead and click our World tab here. We're going to go ahead and set the background color. And I'm just going to set it to Sky Texture. And under Ray Visibility, I'm going to uncheck, untick Camera. It's going back to zero. All right, back to Z. I'm going to grab this plane here. I'm going to actually go ahead and put a material on it. Go to our Materials tab, hit New, and then I am just going to go ahead and do a brick texture. Yeah, that looks good. We're going to hit Shift D to duplicate. Then I'm going to press R X 90 to rotate it on the 90 degrees on the X axis. Bring that in there. I'm going to press Shift D to duplicate it again, and then R Z 90 as well. Enter. And we're just going to move this to where we want by pressing Z. Let's go back to our camera view there. 
and it's a little dark. Let's just grab our light, the one light we have, and change it to sun. And we're going to click use nodes, and I'm going to press 2. And to save some sound, I'm going to come over here to the camera, and I'm going to change this to my GPU. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and disable the shell so they're not showing up in the render. And we're going to hide them from the viewport. Now we're going to come up to our domain, click on Fluid Surface, and we're going to go ahead and give this material with a glass shader. We're going to change the ORI to 1.334. I'm going to give this kind of a bluish color. Not going to be the most authentic, realis realistic color, but that's not too much of a concern right now. We're going to go ahead and click on our white water bubble here. And we're going to give it an emission shader, and I'm going to give it about a 0.5 to make it nice and bright. And then our water foam, we're also going to give it an emission shader, but I'm just going to pick a random color. We'll give it kind of a green color. I'm going to change this to 2, and then our white water spray, which I'm also going to do as a mission. I'm going to do it kind of as a darker blue. I'm going to change this to 3. We're going to come back over here to white water bubble. I like my bubbles to be very, very small, so I'm going to go ahead and put 0 0.5. And then we're going to go ahead and let's scrub down the current timeline a little bit, and let's press 12 to go ahead and render everything to see what it looks like. Actually, that might be... Actually, that looks pretty cool. I think I'm actually pretty happy with that. So now we're going to go ahead and just render it out. Uh, pretty basic setup here. Go ahead and change this to 100%. And then whatever export you normally do, I normally do PNG. But if you decide to do uh, MP4, you can click on FFMPEG. Come down here, change this to MP4 container. And then whatever quality. I traditionally do high quality at real-time encoding speed. And then you can just pick your directory to save it and press F12. I hope everybody enjoyed, and we'll see you in the next one.